Good morning, everybody. It is Jillian from Jilly Juice here over in Canton, beautiful Canton, Ohio. And yeah, wow. What a busy weekend. See, I could see why people really don't, or why a lot of people really don't invent a lot of things really new unless they're doing it for a job and getting paid for it and making a living from it, but it has to be within specific parameters because life can keep you so busy. I mean, if you have a very active life and you're very active job and you're always socially engaging and, and soliciting um, whatever it is that you're soliciting, it doesn't leave room for a lot of like real true thought. I mean, it does and it doesn't. It just depends on your intention. And, and yes, there are, um, I would say, controlled circumstances where people can invent things. But if you are in a controlled circumstance where you're making money off inventing things, then you're working with somebody else's rules, which means that it's not really going to be an invention. It's going to be kind of a regurgitation with a different application or a different way of, um, of uh, saying the same thing. Okay, so I love the fact that my lifestyle has given me the latitude to be able to freely invent something and solicit help from a lot of different people. And because I've asked for it, see, this is what is so amazing is that when I first started creating this protocol, I knew I had an idea, but it wasn't fully just developed. It was like, I, I knew that probiotics and candida and uh, the holistic and the allopathic world were kind of two sides of the same coin. And I saw major results in the beginning of starting the protocol. And so um, I took that experience and I ran with it and I presented it to all of you back in like 2016. And so from 2016 up to this point, I have been soliciting your feedback, soliciting your advice. And you know when I do it because I'm like, hey, you guys, what do you think? What do you feel? How, what, what's your take on this? Um, and then, and then we'd have a discussion and I'd fully then figure, I'd, I'd develop then a thesis from that, that whole research. So it, uh, I've seen some posts out there that I was like, okay, because I've, I've, I've said some things such as it's very difficult to really truly help somebody in the health and wellness if you're not very well balanced yourself if you're not truly changing the biochemistry and what does that mean like you have to be like really 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 healthy and that's all relative because everybody has different levels and different ideas of what good health is well you know we have the, the, the original paradigm out there. Okay. The progressive, okay, let's change the programming of the body and it might change a little bit of your biochemistry. It might change the way you think. Sometimes it might change, uh, the, the way your mind thinks. Okay. And some of it's very superficial with a very obvious outcome because death seems to be like physical death seems to be just the outcome for everybody. So there's a million different programs out there that kind of say the same thing in a different way, but the end result's always the same. So I've come from a standpoint with a J juice is that we're not telling people what it is they're going to, what the outcome is going to be for them. Okay. There is a specific universal outcome when it comes or a specific like expected stimulus when you bring in specific chemicals into your body and there's a stimulus a very universal stimulus when you drink a lot of j juice assuming you follow the recipe uh you will experience waterfalls at some point will it be right away not necessarily it could be like a couple days it could be a couple hours before your first waterfall but at some point you'll experience your first waterfall that's a pretty universal concept that it's not like okay well I'm not saying that everybody's going to experience waterfalls. Of course, everybody at some point, if they follow the protocols, can experience waterfalls. So that's a universal concept that I put out there. And I say, this is the expectation. You'll have healing symptoms. You will do waterfalls. 
or experience waterfalls if you go through the protocol correctly and you'll feel healing symptoms and then your thought process is going to start changing and then i then i go into the body mind and spirit and i talk about now i talk about what what does for me but why i come from my standpoint is because and i'm getting feedback from all of you is because i'm no different than all of you so i know if i experience it at some point all of you are going to experience it at some point it may not be right away it could be like years down the road before you experience the same, same things that i experienced in some level or in a different context but under the same uh mechanics i would say okay so that that's you know that that i'm trying i'm trying to figure out how do i because these are just some difficult concepts because I want people to understand the difference of J juice and of other protocols out there, okay? Where they deal with the with the the body, mind, and spirit, because there's a lot of people. Um, okay, sorry. Oh, back. Okay, hold on a second. Something. Skip. Let's see. All right. So I, I guess I guess I install this. Something came up on my screen. Okay. Anyway, so this thing is going to be right in front of my face, but I can't see you. That's no big deal. But there's going to be a lot of protocols out there that are going to be, uh, um, how does, okay. <laughs> I just got off my train of thought here. That's all right. Um, there are a lot of protocols out there that, that say kind of the, the, the same thing, but a different way with the outcome. And they, they kind of tell you, uh, oh, geez. Okay. Yes. Okay. Hold on, you guys. This is like, I'm doing, there's a stupid update that I did right now that I need to do, the Lenovo App Explorer update. So, so sorry for this interruption. Sometimes my computer updates or does stuff in the middle. Okay, so where was I going with this? So with the gist, so you'll have different experiences with J-Juice, but it won't be like right away, but it'll be, it'll be different at different times. So I can never tell you exactly when you're going to have a healing symptom, when you're going to have, and I might get kicked off by this, okay? So I might have to start over again, but I'm just keep going until I can't go anymore. I, I can't tell you exactly when you're going to have all the, healing that you, all the healing that you're expecting because you guys have a very specific history, a very specific background. Um, you have a very specific different conglomeration of issues. So I just say, okay, here you go. This is a protocol. These are the certain expectations that everyone's universally gonna, going to experience. But then after that, I have no idea. Okay. So I don't push myself onto other people. I don't. Now, in the beginning, in the beginning of the process, I did when I first started the whole J-Juice protocol. Um, I had to, because it was the only way I can figure out how to get feedback from a lot of different people. And then as time progressed, okay, as time progressed, I've chilled out on trolling and making people wrong for their whole, you know, um, belief system because they're partaking in all the turmeric and the honey and all the different pills, powder and supplements. And I'm like, so I just drop seeds nowadays. I don't, I don't come off, I don't go unsolicited and say, hey, you need to do this, you need to do that, and then be totally uh, like, ha like have an expectation and be so invested and almost like push myself. And I don't try to do it, I mean, what I'm coming, where I'm coming from is the J-Juice is not something that you push on anybody. Okay, because when someone says like, well, you know, you don't have to be 100% well to, to help somebody. Well, here's the thing. What is help? What is help? Help is to make it easier for someone to do something by offering one services or resources. resources. She helped him find a buyer to assist, to aid, to help out, lend a hand, to lend a helping hand. Give assistance to, to come to the aid of, succor, aid, and abet. Serving someone with food and drink, she helped herself to a cookie. The action of someone helping to do something, assistance. I asked, I asked, somebody asked, help. I asked for help from my neighbors. Shoot. 
Okay. No. All right, I'm gonna kill that off. Dang it. Okay. I just have something came up on here. All right. Okay. Sorry. All right. So, yeah. So, when it comes to the J juice, okay, you don't have to be 100% healthy to help someone if they ask, but you're not helping them do the do the jages because you, they, you, they, you can't do it for them. You can only present this information and say, hey, this is what it did for you. And then bam, you leave it alone and you let them ask you how to find Jillian in some way and let the person figure out how to get a hold of me in some way and let them <clears throat> be the one to spearhead their own healing process. What I've seen is people have taken my information and have used, have weaponized it by trying to ram it down people's throats. And then what happens is when they have their, another belief system that they hold dear to them, they try to get other people to do it. And I see, and, I, and this is how I know that people, that um, not everybody's a candidate to be a representation of JJ. So I can't help what people do when I'm, you know, I mean, I'm not trying to control all of your processes, but I'm trying to have you understand how it comes out and manifests and what I noticed. So if you are a, um, if you are an influencer where you're trying to run it, ram your information down somebody's throat and make them wrong and do all this stuff. And you know, you, you have people in your life that you know need this, but, but you know, you've already presented to them. Then what you can do with JJ is do the same thing with JJ is try to ram down their throat, try to do this and try to do that and, 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 and make them wrong. And then be so, fully invested that they do this, that it becomes something that is like, is your goal, not their goal anymore. And I don't want that to be any part of anybody's um, experience with J-Juice where we have people that are so, uh, I would say, I'm trying to think of radicalized around J-Juice. Like, so I don't want radicalization around J-Juice. What help is, is when you're doing something for someone that they can't do themselves. You can't do J-Juice for somebody else. You can't like force the information down somebody's throat. And then what happens is when someone doesn't like, you know, someone doesn't respond to you in the way that you expect. And this is for me too. I should probably talk speaking I sentences versus you, but I'm kind of sort of speaking to those of you that do this. Maybe you are the ones that do this, but if you are trying to force this thing down someone's throat and trying to ram it, and then you find different angles to get to them and make them feel guilty. Here's the thing, the biggest thing that I've realized about myself as well as being having it be inflicted upon me is the guilt factor that if you don't partake in this, then you're not being open to possibility. You're not being uh, allowing someone to contribute to you. And the only way that, that people can contribute to a person is that the person requests it. If they don't request it, then there is no point in you putting J juice to that. Now you can do a general type of um, dropping seeds. Morning, Charlie. But when it comes to friends and family, I think we, I think I have, you know, I, and, I, and I, and I have pushed it down some people's throats and I've learned now to just step away and, and not say, okay, well, your husband or your wife could really benefit from this because they have this, this, and this. No, I speak now in a more of a general term about what I've, experience and of course i'm no different than they are and this these are like the general concepts that everybody can relate to and that does take practice that does take you just following me for a while picking up the general concepts that everybody can relate to and then apply it to your life and apply it to your experience because that way they can see that how this has um changed your life okay so that's one of the the, the key things that i that i've been confronted with when it comes to about help and do you have to be 100% healthy to help people? Well, no, you can be completely damaged and mutated to help somebody because all you're doing is, is giving somebody assistance in an area where they can't do it themselves. Like an old, old lady who can't walk across the street by herself carrying big packages. When you give assistance, when you're helping them, you're picking up a bag because you can do that and you're helping her across the street. So that way she doesn't get run over by a car, but you're not trying to change her biochemistry by giving her this information because she has to be the one to want to. Okay. 
So, so here's the thing. Helping people is not predicated on being 100% healthy, being 100% health, being 100% healthy because you're not doing it for them. Okay? However, when it comes to specific concepts, especially around indefinite life physically, there is a very specific rules and laws that have to be applied. And if you're applying the death laws and the death rules, then the outcome is going to be death on a physical level. If you're applying the, the, the rules of life, and this is where the J-juice comes in, okay, then the outcome is going to be life. So it's all about rules that you're applying. So if you are in the health and wellness world and you believe in death and you're applying the rules of death, which is if somebody has, which people don't really realize, they have imbalances. And what are the indicators? Balding, obesity, aging, uh, um, looping in this, in, 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 in whatever activism. Uh, the biochemistry, if it's, been traumatized, you'll come from very extreme sides of the spectrum of love and hate and indifference. Okay. And so when you're in it, you can't see it unless you want to change it. If you love your love, 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 or you love your hate, 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 or you want to be indifferent towards anything, then there's no, there's, there is no impetus for you to want to, to, to be open to possibly having your biochemistry change. Okay, and so this is one of the biggest things that uh, is the hardest hurdles around the J-juice is the physical is easy. The mind is not that hard. It's very easy too. It's the spirit is what is the most difficult hurdle around the J-juice. And so me now dealing with the spirit, okay, is now one of the, is, is going is going to conflict because the spirit is now is being well it has always been associated with all of the different religions and um healing type of energies and belief systems around the in the holistic world the mind body and spirit but under the jj world it's the body mind and spirit and i don't know how you would characterize this type of thing in other religions but i'm telling you the spirit is the hardest thing to be open to changing, okay? And you're gonna find that people are gonna get to the point of, of physical and maybe the mental, but then they're gonna stop at the spirit. As soon as you start feeling something different about your set ingrained belief systems, regardless of what it is, whether it's atheism, whether it's Judaism, Catholicism, Catholicism, any of the belief systems, even around uh, the different social constructs, especially when it has to do with the Bible. When you start, when you, when you, when you are like now being challenged that you're going to potentially have a biochemical change is going to have you be open to a lot more things that you were not open to. That's where people are going to stop. Now I'm not saying that they're going to stop, stop, but I think that they're only going to do the JJs at the level of where they can still feel comfortable in the spirit that they have been uh, manifesting for years. And I'm going to tell you that the period of unpredictability, unpredictability with JJ's, especially around the spirit, is going to be the hardest. But it's going to be the most rewarding because, hey, it could, because it's, it won't have you not believe your belief system. I'm not going to say you're going to like believe in this one day and all of a sudden now you're going to believe in something else. No, you're going to, you're going to finally see the patterns of unification of all the religions. So then you realize that your religion isn't the only religion. What has caused the difference or your spirituality isn't the only spirituality. What's going to cause, what causes differences is the words. Okay. When we say let go and let God, you know what that actually means? Let go and let life, let go and let biochemistry, let go and let hormones, let go and let biodiversity. Okay. God is just uh, another word for all the same things that are representing life in different religions. But if you believe in death, then there are that people should die. Then, yeah, then I could see why there would be a difference, why there'd be conflict. OK, so when you have conflict with somebody, it's because your biochemistries are not aligned. And you have seen or I have seen 
where you get hung up on the words and you haven't really, and, and the words are superficial, like superficial healing, right? And the allopathic holistic, but the words are the superficial differences. What the real true root cause of the differences is life and death. That's the real true root of it all. That's the root of all of the cancer, disease, and chronic illness is your belief system of life and death because you in your head believe that you should live, but then your actions and what you do actually believe in death. So you have that imbalance of your body, mind, and spirit. You are intellectualizing change and intellectualizing your life, but you're not, it, it's not reaching the biochemistry. And so this is why we have conflict in our societies because we say we believe in this, but our biochemistry says something different. See, when your mind, when your mind says one thing, your body says another thing, it's the most confusing thing. So that's where you see hypocrisy. When people say one thing, but do another. That's the imbalance. Okay. So the, I'm telling you, I've been dealing and wrestling with the spiritual healing for about a year now. I have gone through so many different people who I've let totally close to me because I was attracting and projecting a specific kind of spirit that was very imbalanced okay so when you have a major intense relationship with anyone around a specific subject matter or a specific thing and it's very intense on both ends and you feed off of it each other that is an imbalance because because what happens is is that you go from because because when someone when there's an intense on one end there's gonna be intense on the other end you know love and hate are basically the same thing they, they reside in the in this same arena of 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 an energy that that will exhibit another energy and how you characterize it doesn't matter because it's still an imbalance it's an extreme um, but there's a social construct around love and a social construct around hate and that's what has given people the um, the the deception that there's a difference I guess that's how I say it okay so um so anyways so i've experienced a lot of the very extremes in the spirituality world and and it, and it, you know and, and and some of the stuff in my protocol does challenge alcohol does challenge the different drugs you know when you have certain religions or certain belief systems that in the bible or in some thing it says that jesus or somebody else drank wine so how could alcohol be bad well you know everybody is different as far as how alcohol uh runs through their body and 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 and, and maybe some people i'll say i don't know i don't even want to say that because what i'm trying to, what i'm saying is like i won't ever drink alcohol ever again because i know what it does to me what now, now that i feel like i'm pretty much like 90% reversed physically because there could be a 10% of the stuff I don't even know about, but could I drink alcohol now and, and be able to process it? I don't have any desire to, I have no reason to. Okay. There are people that have been on the protocol. I don't say that long really, but they still drink alcohol, but they don't have like the outcome of why I won't drink is because of yeast infections because I used to get so many yeast infections and the alcohol when I drank it, when I was detoxing from it or, purging out the excess candida that it fed, I was getting yeast infection. So I won't ever go down that road again. But other people who have drank alcohol on the protocol, and it's not on the protocol, they wouldn't get yeast infections. They'll get like, they'll get tired when they go through their healing process from the alcohol. Well, that wasn't my, my curse of feeling tired. It, it would be great if I could just feel tired after detoxing from alcohol on the J-juice, but that wasn't in the cards for me. But, but, um, but, you know, I mean, I guess everybody is different. However, you know, everyone's got to really figure out for themselves. And I, I don't really truly think that alcohol is a necessity <laughs> in anybody's life. But people do. And why we drink it? Okay, it tastes good. Well, okay. And if it's biblical, okay, fine. But really wait until you're 90% healthy that you reverse all your cancer disease and chronic illness
before you partake in alcohol or anything that really is going to cause an imbalance. Because if you're already imbalanced with candida, alcohol is not going to help you. So, so anyway, so the, the things that are as belief systems do get challenged. Biochemistries do get challenged. Um, and the hardest thing about J-Juice for people who are just starting out is not to ram it down people's throats. It's to exemplify. It's to show. It's to speak from I statements, yes, but it is to exemplify what it is it's doing for you with general words and concepts that everybody can relate to. Because that's really what it comes down to is how can a person who you have no idea what their issues are, how can they relate to you to you and then the general concepts about J juice? When you say the nutrition doesn't discriminate, it doesn't. So when someone says, oh yeah, I have ALS, I have this, I have that. Well, you don't want to say, oh, it's going to cure your ALS or it's going to do this. Don't ever use the word cure. Don't ever say that it's going to do something for somebody because then you're, then you're playing the part of the allopathic holistic. Just say nutrition doesn't discriminate. It will be addressed. How it gets addressed and when it gets addressed, you have no idea because you have no idea how many issues they have from past, present, and future. Okay? So it's like, it's one of those things where you can never tell somebody. And when people are practicing religions and have such a very devout belief system in whatever it is, it is almost like knee jerk for them to tell somebody what the protocol can, will do for them. Almost like making a promise. And I'm just like, don't do that. Because if they do the protocol and they don't like the healing symptoms and they quit too early, they're going to only blame you, but they'll blame me for being a fraud, right? Because we're making all these promises of which I did get, get you know, I, it bit me in the ass when I was speaking from the, from the, the point of view of the allopathic holistic, because that was all I knew was that how I was able to reach people was say, Hey, yeah, it can do, it can cure cancer. It can do this, it can do that, regrowing them. And really that's not how we need to present J juice is that it can do all these great things. Nutrition doesn't discriminate. There's a blueprint to the human body that just have two arms, two legs, five fingers. Okay. If, um, if you have the ability to create sperm or an egg or carry a baby, then you are hundred percent normal. It doesn't matter if you wear a dress, um, because it's a biological construct. We are getting rid of the social constructs that has caused the division. And that includes religion as well as other spiritual type of stuff. And it, um, and, and what else? Um, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> trying to think of other stuff that the J juice. It doesn't discriminate. And then your biochemistry is going to change. And I can't tell you how that's going to manifest. So some of you that, are, that, that believe in, in Jesus Christ, I'm not saying you're not going to believe in Jesus Christ, but you're going to be like, might be more relaxed in your approach of proselytizing. You're going to realize that there's no need to convert somebody into your religion or make them wrong because everybody that's on a, that, that is living really believes the same thing you believe, but they have a different way to characterize it, different words in, in, a, in a different language. Maybe you're not going to be trying to convert people because you already are the same. You already are basically promoting the same thing. You all want to live. Nobody wants to die. But what, what happens is, is what makes the imbalance where, you know, you say one thing and do another is that your mind wants to live, but your what you feed your body and what you're bringing into your body is then saying a totally opposite thing. Okay. And this is where all the conflict comes from. So then you're going to realize that there's nothing separating us. What is coexist? Coexist is real. What is coexist? When people find it very satanic when they say, oh yeah, she's saying coexist. Cause I've seen people be very offended by the word coexist. Well, coexist means that you realize that the only thing that separates us is the words that characterize the same thing. Okay. So Jesus Christ could equal love or not love. I'm sorry. Equal life. Jesus Christ could equal God. Um, Jesus Christ could equal biochemistry, hormones, maybe viruses too, because viruses also can impact the body in a good way on a strong body and can impact the body on a, you know, uh, in, in a bad way because on a, it's on a weak body. So viruses will be good or bad relative to the person receiving them. Okay. 
so um so there's so there's a lot of ways to describe and characterize god in life it doesn't have to be only through jesus christ the name okay but if we want to unify people without all the baggage science and academia i think is probably the best way because yeah you bring in your jargon from your work, your belief system it's going to then impact people in a positive or negative way and you don't know who's receiving it so you'd rather speak from a very like scientific point of view because no matter what you believe in science everyone believes in science in some way now you can say oh it's junk science or it's pseudoscience but science is science life is life there i mean life is life death is death there are some words that have especially in the science world that have definitions that you can't spin or have it be based upon the context no it's this is the word this is the definition that's describing a specific manifestation based upon what's already been researched and substantiated it's not something that is um subjective like jesus jesus is subjective when you speak in scripture, which I've said people not to do because I don't want to, to create a division, you're speaking from a very subjective point of view that would then disenfranchise others because you're coming from a very, like, um, uh, I don't know, uh, divisive, which I'm not saying that that's your intention, but there's a lot of baggage around a lot of the different religions, a lot of different, like the healing groups that talk about ascension and this and that. And so, we don't want to come from a, a, uh, a divisive. We want to come from a very scientific point of view that A is actually A and there's no footnotes behind A. B is B and there's no footnotes behind B and then equals C and there's no major footnotes. It's like straight communication with nothing that you have to go and then figure out the context. But sometimes you have to, it just depends on, you know, on, on your perspective. So, this is one of the most difficult things ever. And, and I'm covering this continuously until I find an easy way to talk about it because it's easy to talk about the physical. I have conquered the physical as far as explaining it. And I've conquered the mind as far as like the body and mind as far as explaining it with JG's, but the spiritual, oh my God, that is, oh my life. Oh my Jesus. That's, that's the most difficult thing. So when somebody talks about like, oh yeah, you don't have to be 100% healthy to help people. No, you don't, because helping is just doing something that, is pers that another person, doing something for somebody that another person cannot do for themselves. That's what help is. When it comes to introducing J-Juice, you're not helping them. You're giving them a possibility and giving them an option. And that's it. You're just giving people options and choices. Okay, and they either will explore it or not. But it would be nice if you explained on your end, okay, why it is you are introducing this, not just posting my links and there's no context behind it, which is the difficult thing for some of you is to, to really explain why it is you're promoting it. But I'll tell you what, I notice when biochemistries change. I notice when some of you are really doing the J juice, and I notice that some of you that are not doing the J juice, okay, but say that you are. Okay, because I see it in your posts. Do you realize that what you say, what you do, what you post is a direct reflection on your current state of your biochemistry? And so, and I, and I don't bag on anybody that says they're doing JJ's and, and, and then I see them posting all this activist stuff because I'm not going to try to police anybody. But here's the thing. If you're constantly in my face, constantly saying, that you're doing the J juice, you get it, you love me, you hate me, or whatever, okay? And I see you are posting all this stuff. You know, I'm gonna call you out <laughs> because you've put yourself in my world where I have to address you in some way because I don't like seeing hypocrisy. So those of you that are, you know, that, that know that you're still in the activist world, or still in the empath or the hatred world, and you say you're all about J-Juice and you're completely taking up my time, well, I'm going to basically point it out to you. So if you're still in the activist stuff and you're still in the empath world and you're still in the holistic world doing all your stuff, 
Just don't even bother commenting. Don't really say anything at all that says, oh yeah, I'm doing J-Juice, but then I see something totally different because I, in my head, I'm going to have to call it out because that's just, J-Juice forces you to pick up on things that are not completely aligned. Okay? Um, I mean, I've been focusing a lot now since I've been getting away from the, the micro level of the cellular level, and I'm in the macro where because like geopolitics. I'm focusing a lot on the different psychological and biological warfare because I've noticed that, yes, when, when you're doing J-Juice, you're not going to be subject to the psychological and biological warfare regardless of who's who is perpetrating it. Okay, you're going to now see how people manipulate each other to sell books, to sell protocols, to sell pills, powders, and supplements, to sell ideas, exercise regimes, to sell you into the fear of one party over another, okay? And that, that comes from, well, I mean, that comes from that if people are falling for all of these things, um, for whatever it is, there is a manipulation somewhere and you can manipulate for good and you can manipulate for evil. What characters are characterizes good and what characterizes evil? It's based upon life or death. What is evil? Evil is imbalance. What is good? Good is balance. That's really what good and evil is. It's nothing that, well, I mean, people have made these assumptions about evil, like that you're the devil, but what is the devil? The devil is, is imbalance. It's basically the body on a death trajectory and then it's manifesting in and projecting in your in your behaviors and what you say, and what you do and how you interact with people and what you manifest, right? So, and then we're always going to be encountering good and evil in every, every situation. And so how you respond, you know, I mean, how you respond is based upon how balanced you are. And so sometimes you have, I mean, sometimes it's better to, well, sometimes some of you or myself will try to give people the benefit of the doubt. We'll be like, okay, here's a straight communication. Don't do this. And then the, and a person who, who's very well balanced will be like, okay, I won't do that again. And then bam, everything's great. And, and then they, and they keep quiet because they know that there's something going on and they don't want to rock the boat. Others, pff, nope. They'll keep responding in different ways and I'll keep, and then I'm finally, finally, then I have to be the one to then take up my negative elements and say, okay, I'm drawing a boundary. Here it is. Bam. So sometimes you have to be harsh in circumstances where somebody doesn't get it, especially if they're impeding upon your spirit. You've got to, you've got to draw boundaries. So you have a balance of good and evil, so to speak. You have the a balance of the positive elements and the negative elements to help you be able to adapt and survive and live in a society that has so many different people with different belief systems and different ways of projecting their biochemistry. And it doesn't help anybody to come from extreme balance, from extreme sides of the spectrum, but people do. And that's where you then have to be very in tune with yourself to then pick up on these different triggers and act accordingly. But that comes from a, um, a clearing of the body and the mind for you then to really understand how the spirit manifests and how you respond. And, you know, I mean, what is spirituality really? It's, it's a representation of the past, present, and future. Just like the healing symptoms that you deal with is from the past, present, and future. What are these healing symptoms from? From your biochemistry that has uh, experienced the experienced trauma, experienced you know uh, successes, and experienced a lot of different things from the past, present, and future. And you have to deal with it. So spirituality is the same thing. It's it's how you characterize the past, how you characterize the present, and how you characterize the future. And some people characterize the future as that you're going to die someday. And so you already have an idea of that the afterlife and what you're going to do and how your funeral is, funeral is going to go and all this stuff. And so that's pretty safe. So there's your safe spirituality that you think of. And then maybe you're saying, like, I believe in immortality, but not of the body, only of the mind and the spirit. And I'm like, they all have to be you know, aligned. But then that's immortality in the, in the religion slash holistic slash healing, energy healing world. Immortality has a very, very huge connotation and it has major baggage. So how I've set myself apart, because people can think that, oh, Jillian's saying that you're gonna become immortal. No, I'm saying that we are applying the laws of life that give you indefinite life. 
there should be no reason why a person would die unless it's really out of their control. And there would be happy very specific circumstances for that to happen. Okay. So, um, so anyway, so where I was going with that? Oh my gosh. So this is, I mean, this is definitely because I'm I'm still going through just how to explain my past healing. And maybe some of you will be going through the same thing. I don't know. Hey, Tiffany, thanks. And so, um, so yeah, so that's how I characterize the spirituality is how is basically past, present, and future. So you're seeing that everything is related. So when I talk about healing symptoms, past, present, and future, healing symptoms. Spirituality is about how you characterize past, present, and future. And the thing with J-Juice is there, it's unpredictable what the future is going to hold. And I said that before in one of my other videos, that it is very unpredictable what the future is going to hold. And so that's a, a point of, of really just a fear for a lot because they're so used to having some kind of answer. Even if they say, oh, we don't know what's going to happen you know, when you die, they at least they know they're going to die. And whatever happens, if they do good things and good deeds in their life, then their death would be amazing or the afterlife would be amazing. And I'm like, I don't know if I initially believe that, but that's okay. It's nothing for me to impose. But if you indefinitely live physically of the body, mind, and spirit, then what is spirituality? And so I've characterized now spirituality, which I'm still gleaning out. But I remember I have all this baggage from the last like three, six, nine months. Okay. I'm still now sorting through all my baggage. So how I characterize spirituality really with the J-Juice is that we're living symbiotically with our internal universe and our external universe living indefinitely. So my mission statement is, is unifying systems, manifesting pathways for indefinite life for all mankind. So unifying systems means every single religion that you guys have, every single belief system that's out there that of course wants to live, okay? Every single company, every single charity, whatever it is, government, culture, male, female, whatever, unifying all the systems to finally figure out that we're all in this together and the only thing that separates us is the words and that, and life and death, okay? And then manifesting pathways. We're giving people the opportunity to make a choice for themselves. When you give this mission statement, unifying systems, manifesting pathways for indefinite life for all mankind, that's gonna grab somebody's attention. So we're giving people the opportunity to manifest a pathway for indefinite life for all mankind. There is nobody going to be discriminated against. The only thing that's going to stop people from having indefinite life is their own self. And people are saying like, well, how do you, how do you stop racism and all the different isms and discrimination? Well, you drop your arms and you stop reacting to it. You stop feeding into it because if you are against this racist type of thing, then um, what you're doing is then defending or you're, you're, you're now saying that they're wrong for having a belief system. So then you've already now created a separation. Okay. And um, why even respond at all? If everybody on Facebook stopped responding or responding to racism and we saw the people that had their belief system and we didn't have to necessarily respond, we wouldn't have any war. Now, if somebody commits a crime, then yes, they go to jail, they commit a crime. But having a belief system isn't really necessarily bad. It's how it manifests in your behavior. Okay. And what has hurt people is the fact that someone's belief system has then um, triggered people into behaviors that then turn into and translate into real world violence. And so this is why we need to promote J juice so we can then stop triggering people into real world violence. And because really, when you think about it, you know, if you say anything like the government, if you say anything that's going to hurt somebody, that you're you're going to you're going to shoot somebody or do something like that, they're going to come after you. Okay, they're going to come after you. So anybody that promotes violence, no matter what, is going to be dealt with. 
and they're going to take you away because they're like, holy crap, you're a danger to society. But simply having a belief system is nothing wrong with it. If someone doesn't like or believe in this, hey, whatever, who cares? That's not for you to try to change them out of that. You can't force somebody to believe something or change their thought process about a person or a culture. But you keep responding to it, then it escalates. So if you disarm yourself, you disarm the other person because they're trying to get a rise and trying to get feed off of this energy that they love. And so it then becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy because you're feeding into it. So, and that's a major concept that's difficult for a lot of us. And what I do when I see people trying to like, you know, talk smack to me is I just simply block. If I see somebody that's really just so negative and I can't go and say, oh my God, some, I think maybe one time I think I got triggered and I said, I didn't want to say anything bad, but I just said my belief system. And then I just block them because I'm like, I had, I got my last, I got my word in about my belief system, system and that's it. I just blocked him because it was just like, but I'm not even gonna do that anymore. Okay. So blocking people out that really just like bring up the negativity in you that you, or just scrolling or unfollowing. I usually block people that put out violence around um, children and violence around animals. I like to promote these pictures of what they're, what people are doing out there in other countries that I can't help. So I block out the violent people on my Facebook, even if it's indirect violence. But, um, but I usually unfollow the people that are just still stuck in their biochemistry in the same biochemistry looping because I don't need to be a party to that. And I have like 4,000 people on my Facebook because of, you know, of, of the last like how many years I've been on. But it still gives me a good idea of how to work with a cross section of different people and understanding where they're coming from. So, um, but yeah, so unifying systems, manifesting pathways. So, so introducing J juice and using general terms and then talking about your experience, if you're open to that, is a perfect way to manifest a pathway for somebody. You're not doing it for them. You're not helping them. No, because you're not doing it for them. So you're not helping people by giving J juice introducing it you're giving them an option a choice but you're not doing it for them so this is where people i know have a very misconception when they talk about j juice and they say i'm helping somebody and i say that you, you know you for you to really for you to really like put out a health protocol you have to have a real good clear body mind and spirit and apply the right laws if not then it's not it's not really working I can't even say help because help is such a, it's, it's, it's being used in the wrong way. Okay. Helping somebody is picking up their bags. If they're too weak to pick up a bag, that's it. It's not trying to get them to do a protocol. Cause when you, when you think about it, a doctor helps somebody, they have the license to go and give them a prescription medication to then direct them to take this medication for them to have a specific desired result. So you know who helps people, not people on the internet, because you're just typing, there's nothing to help somebody with, okay? Doctors help people. What we do on the internet is we manifest a pathway of either life or death. That's what it comes out. We're not helping anybody on the internet. We're manifesting pathways. Because what I do is no different than what somebody in the healing energy world is doing when they're promoting turmeric and honey and all that stuff. We're, we are we are uh, projecting and manifesting life or death. And if you understand what promotes life and what promotes death, then you'll understand where I'm coming from. <laughs> I mean, so nobody's helping anybody on the internet. Just so you know, nobody's helping anybody. The only the doctors are helping people. And anyone that is in a physical presence of somebody who has a disability that you're gonna pick up a bag or make them dinner or do something that they can't do for themselves. Okay, so I got to think of another word now. Oh my God. See that, that is a hard thing for me because this, this is a new concept because I noticed that with one of, you know, one of the, the uh, conflicts that I had the last, you know, couple weeks was that we have these self-proclaimed helpers on the internet and took offense when I said, because I was still under the word of help, that really to help somebody health wise, you have to be pretty much very clear body, mind, and spirit to really be able to help somebody with their health. 
and really it's not it it's projecting so if you are all about life but you're applying the death protocol to a body then you're manifesting death so i don't really know what you mean by your you're helping somebody with what what are you helping them with you're not there picking up a bag so what are you doing you're you're projecting you're forcing you're manifesting a pathway to death Woo! that's pretty crazy so yeah so what let me see what this is so help what is so um okay so social media here we go so social media manifests pathways to either life or death there you go okay you're not helping anybody on social media just so you know social media man manifest pathways to either life or death now you have to figure out what do you mean by that <laughs> okay so that's something okay so nobody helps anybody on social media help is not manifest help is not practice you cannot help somebody on social media there you go you cannot help someone on social media Helping people on social media is a fallacy. Helping people around their health is a fallacy. Okay? It is. So you could be physically in the same room with somebody and, and say that you're helping them with their health, but you're, you know, you can't do it for them. <laughs> okay? So help is being used actually wrong unless you're using it in the right circumstance. So social media is something where everything is virtual. You're just manifesting a pathway to either life or death. That's it. So you cannot help somebody on social media. You can't. There's no helping on social media. Okay? So help. So what help is, help is physically, physically, is physically giving someone assistance is giving someone assistance who is unable to or who is who has a disability who has a disability Help is physically giving someone assistance who has a disability. Okay? That's what help is. Help is physically giving someone assistance who has who has a disability. And I have to cross out, unable. Okay? So I'm going to make sure in the book, in the book, that we are not utilizing the word help at all in the book. That's going to be a challenge of not using a word that we're so used to just throwing around like it's water and thinking that we're actually doing something. You're manifesting either a pathway to life or a pathway to death on social media. So unless somebody is disabled and you're assisting them in something they can't do, you're not helping them. You're manifesting one or the other. And that's really what it comes down to. We get lost in all of the jargon and all of the, the pro, all the protocols and all of the distraction and all of the, the programming, and it really just comes down to it. You're manifesting a pathway of life or death. So now, now really examine what you're actually doing on social media. What are you actually doing on social media? What are you manifesting for yourself as well as for other people? That's huge. That is huge. So when you're not telling someone what they're going to do or what's going to happen with the, the J-Juice, you're leaving it up to the people that are doing J-Juice to figure out and let us know. That's why when people ask me, well, what is it going to do for me? I'm like, no, you tell us with your, all of your issues what the juice is doing for you. 
You may come into this with TMJ or ALS, but hey, it may not be addressed right away. You may have other issues that are being addressed right away, but you may have your ALS and your TMJ be addressed like in like two years or a year or, or who knows. So you tell us, you give us insight what it's doing for you. That's a very different paradigm to work from that is very foreign, especially in the healing groups out there in the ascension artists and all the different spiritual healers and um, energy healers, very different concept to work from. Okay, when you're manipulating somebody with their massage, you're not helping them because they can do it themselves. You're manifesting either life or death. If you understand what massage is, you're releasing toxins. But where are those toxins going? Huh? They're not really being released because they haven't changed their biochemistry to be able to release it or they wouldn't be going to in the first place. See, we we have this whole impression that help is something and it and it's and it's it's oh my gosh. It's totally different. We are manifesting pathways. Manifesting pathways, either life or death. So if you are uh, um, a naturopathic or homeopathic, a massage therapist, um, a psychologist, or whatever, you may you know, give somebody some kind of, of relief, but then ultimately what are you manifesting? Because there's superficial ways to give people a specific, you know, intention or give people a specific outcome with an intention. But ultimately, at the at the end result, what are you actually manifesting? Especially if you believe if, if you, you know, if you're practicing something that is not giving someone the ultimate outcome of indefinite life. And and I know that's not really people's intention because they're trying to give people relief. And sometimes maybe you have to apply a therapy to save them from, you know, imminent death, but it's still a crapshoot. You don't know that what you're doing is not going to actually accelerate the death process or slow it down. It's still a crapshoot. So there is an actual uh, recipe and an actual protocol. There's an actual formula to life where you're not rolling the dice, but it still depends upon the person that's taking it or doing it. It's not on you. You give people the opportunity, the pathway to life, and they will manifest it in the way that they that they will and the outcome is going to be whatever it is that they have manifest whatever it is that they based on their understanding and then we try to support people in my secret public facebook group okay so this is the concept we just gleaned out today that was very difficult help is physically giving somebody assistance who has a disability that's it that's what help is you're not helping anybody on the internet you cannot help somebody on the internet. There is no helping anybody on the internet, on social media. So all of these healing groups, all of these special groups that are out there, they're not helping anybody. Just so you know, they are not helping anybody. Social media and the internet manifest pathways to either life or death. Social media ma manifests pathways to either life or death. Figure that out. Wow. So I got to make sure Kevin knows this. If, if there's a word help at all in the book, we're erasing it. <laughs> Kevin! <laughs> Kevin Van Rompuy. We need to erase all words with help unless it's in the context of a physical manifestation like the blood helps the person maintain life that's okay so that's where you can use the word help when it's assisting something physically but not when it comes to your friends and family. So it's all about context. And we're utilizing help in the wrong context with very dire circumstances, very dire outcomes. Okay. So with you and your activism, it's not helping anybody. Your fear mongering is not helping anybody. You think you're raising awareness is helping people? No, it's not. You're inducing more fear. You cannot help anybody on the internet. 
<laughs> wow, that was awesome. I got to sit on that for a while. You guys have a great day. I'm going to sit on this for a minute. Bye.